Next, we will talk about finance and budget. We'll have uh, Robin O'Donnell, uh, DTM. And Robin has been a Toastmaster for a number of years and also a member of many clubs. Currently, member of Kingston Toastmasters and recently celebrated completing the strategic relationship pathway. This year, Robin is applying her professional skills to support District 73 in the role of finance manager. And of course, uh, the entire district fully appreciate her expertise. To help us understand the what's, why's, and how to's of claims and reimbursement, let's welcome Robin. Thank you, Manny, for that welcome and introduction. Much appreciated. Uh, first, I just want to check everyone can hear me speaking well enough. Thank you. Yes, as Manny says, I've been in Toastmasters for a number of years, 22 years actually, and I first joined in 2001 as a member of Frankston Toastmasters. I certainly love it and I'm a proud member of Bass Division for all the time I've been in Toastmasters. Over the years, I have taken on, on other district roles. I've done both area and division director roles, so I have an idea of what everybody's tr been trained up for and also having been on the other side of organising contests and needing to claim reimbursements and get involved in what you need to do to claim money back from the district. So it's my privilege this year to serve the district in the finance manager role. I was excited to be asked to be on the team and so far we're going well. I think we've hit the ground running and I'm looking forward to the year ahead in my role and for all of us um, in everybody's role. And I think we'll have a successful year as a, an overall team and wishing everybody well. Now, today's presentation is mainly to do with, it's called your budget and your expenses. And I'll be running through what you need to do to claim costs and what your allowances are for different things for running contests and so on. So I have a PowerPoint slide, which I will start sharing my screen to run through. Now, I thought that it would be easier if I run through this presentation and then if there's questions, we'll take those at the end. So let's get started. All right, your budget and your expenses. So the agenda for this is first to go through the area and division budgets, and then I'll go through what's involved for claiming reimbursements. And finally, I'll touch on a system that we may have up and running throughout the year if Toastmasters puts it forward to our district called Concur. Right, the first thing is to do with budgets for the area directors and division directors. For an area contest, people are getting an allowance. Every area director gets an allowance of $250 for their area contests. And there's also an allowance which only some area directors might need for club visits, depending on geography and how far you need to travel for a round trip. Uh, we allow up to 100 kilometres for a round trip, and that's at 55 cents per, ki per kilometre. So we'd need evidence of, of that. And I'll go into that a bit more later. With the division directors, there is also an allowance for the budget for the contests and that's $350 and then for the club officer trainings there's $400 as an, a budget for round two which will be held in February March 25 and another $400 for the next round which is the first round for 25 26 which will be held in June July which comes under that comes under this year's area directors to run those. So sorry, Robin, does that mean for division director for our club officer training, that's $800 in total for the two of them or $400 for the two of them? $800, so $400 each. Okay, cool. thank you. If, you. if you need to spend that much, you don't have to spend all of it, but that's the upper limit that we've allowed for the district. It's the same amount that was set for last year. So with regards to the contests, the district purchases the trophies. Uh, that way they're all standardised, they're all with the Toastmasters logo and 
So that's not something that the area directors and the division directors need to concern themselves with, A, organising and B, having to spend part of their allowance on that. So they'll be organised by the district and they'll be provided for the contests to hand out to the first place winners at those levels. Hey, Robin, just want a clarification. With the uh, token budget for area contest, does that include venue hire? Because I don't know too many venues that would cover eight hours for $250. And it's then you've got things like trophies and all the other things. Yeah, there's no trophies. That's just yeah, that's not included. No, it does include venue hire, but I'll come to that in a minute in terms of ways that people can try and cut that cost back. Um, I might as well get onto that now, I guess, since you've asked the question. Thank you. With regards to the venues and for area contests specifically, a lot of the clubs will often step up and help. So, for example depending on your area, you might have one or two clubs that you feel have got the resources and a suitable venue who could spare a night on their agenda and split the contests over two nights. That That's an option. I, I've done in the part, that in the past when I've been area director and that really does help in terms of cutting the costs back because you're not actually having to pay for that venue cost up front. And there have been instances where I've known area contests have been held somewhere for a day. I couldn't tell you what the cost of that was. I know Bass Division did that once probably about seven years ago, but they probably got some assistance elsewhere in terms of people helping with the food and so on. Not everybody, not everyone has clubs that will help out, but I would certainly, as area directors, when you're going to start your visits, you can visit the clubs and you'll get an idea as to who you think might be suitable and to try and get them to look at and agree to put something into their calendar to help out. And that way you can also draw on the club members to help with running as contest officials at the same time. Now, another area where you can get some help is to do with the food. Um, you could get people to bring a supper get members of the host club and anyone who's visiting to, can help out with that to help cover those costs. So if you're able to source a venue through one of your clubs and get assistance with the food, well, it doesn't really leave you with too much. Certainly in the role of an area director, that really trims it down. Another option with that is that you can hold, sometimes clubs or areas might hold a contest at a place that where there's meals, depending on a venue. And that would often open up the option. You can actually charge for the food if you felt you wanted to do that and you thought that members might pay a small amount because you always actually are allowed to provide to charge for food, whereas we're not allowed to charge for entrance to the contest. That's everyone can attend those free of charge. So they're just some ideas. Now, the district does understand that there will be exceptions of areas that find that more difficult. I can see that there was something that was just dropped into the chat before, I think, from Tasmania. Obviously, that involves a bit more in terms of geography and, and so forth. And the district is here to help, I guess, is what I'm going to say. But we would like you to try and source venues and do what you can to arrange at to arrange something to keep the costs to the minimum, um, that would be fantastic. But if you need assistance, we're here. I'm here and also the district trio if you want to ask us for any further assistance in something that's a bit outside of the usual area circumstance, we're certainly here to help. And the next thing I'll move on to is to these club visits. As I mentioned before, the round trips say for something in Bass Division, I think the area that has sale and the areas down Bansdale Way, there could potentially be, as an example, more travel between where you might live and, and where those area visits are. It's 100 kilometres on a round trip, and that is to be provided to us by Google Maps. 
I did have something I was going to share on my screen, which I worked out as an example, but unfortunately can't do that. Um, but that's basically what we use as a, as a rule of thumb as evidence that the, the distance has needed to be travelled. And there will be instances, I guess, in some areas or divisions where there are flights involved, but you'd need to um, contact us and we'll uh, let you know of assistance in that area for specific circumstances. Okay, does anyone have, I'm gonna move into the claiming the reimbursement parts next, but does anyone have any other questions on that for now? With the um, venue for the airy contest, if the uh, if the venue wants the money up front, can an area director get that before the event and then ask for uh, refreshment reimbursements later, for example? Yes, that's an excellent question. Thank you, Mark. Um, that's actually thing one way that would assist in terms of the finances. If if there's some if a venue charges and they give you an invoice up front, mm -hmm. um, you can chart, pass that on to me and we can pay that directly. So it does come out of your overall budget, but well, you don't have to pay it and then get reimbursed in that instance. So we're happy. In fact, that's a, a very good way for us to get bills paid if that's an option from any venue right. that you have. And so, all right, so you're organising that next month and we pay that next month and your contest's not for another couple of months' time. Well, then, yes, the reimbursement for the refreshments, that can come later. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to the reimbursements, claiming reimbursements. Now, this is something that most of you will do throughout the year. And there's a link that's on the district website, on the District 73 website under district leaders, and there's an icon there for reimbursements. So there's some steps once you get to that point on the website, there, there are some steps to follow. First thing you do is to download a claim form which is an Excel spreadsheet. And that's a standard form which Toastmasters uses around all of the districts in the country. So we're similar to what others do. You would complete the form. Now, what gets filled in on that form is the name of the person, your basic details, the name of the person who's requesting the um, reimbursement. That's in the top left-hand corner. It asks for which club you're from, your name, and then on the top right-hand corner, it's got the area for to put where you're wanting to be reimbursed, the pay in, the beneficiary name, the bank account details, and, and so on. Now, I'll just give you a bit of a tip with that in an Excel spreadsheet, because we don't want you to save these into a PDF. It has to come to me in the Excel format, just to make sure with the bank account numbers that you've got them all there, because sometimes if you put a zero in it, doesn't always pick that up. So just make sure everything is there um, before you save it and send it to me. Now in the body of the form, there's an area where you're gonna put the description, which shows the date which you're incurring or the date that you're claiming the expense. And then you'll put a description, say venue hire at Adelaide contest. And then next to that, you'll be putting the amount now, if you happen to have two or three items that are going into the one claim, I would ask that they would be listed separately. That's just to help us with, or really me, in terms of the finance area with coding different items to various budget lines. They'll all be processed separately. And then it totals at the end. There's a formula in there that adds them up automatically. So say so you're claiming $200 for an area contest all of those lines are there. There's a tab on the next page in that spreadsheet where you can cut and paste copies of receipts, PDFs. We want to get all the receipts in a PDF format if that's possible. If you can save them into there, that's great. But if you can't, I don't mind as long as they're included in the email that comes with the reimbursement form. So I've got evidence that they've been paid and that they tie up to the amounts that we're claiming. So once that comes to me, I'll go through them and set them up in the, in the bank and 
they'll be either authorised by David Martin as district director or Janine Wan as program quality director, where the three signatories on the account. And I also have to process this in a system called Intact, which is a system which we use worldwide, which I'm still learning and getting used to, but it's basically the system that we use for reporting to world headquarters for our finances in our district. Okay, they're the main things I would say about claiming reimbursements. My email address is on the district website as well, the District 73 Finance website. The finance manager has an email address. It's on the same page that everybody's listed in for um, their own roles as area and division directors. So I don't know if you've seen that page, but my email address is on there and you can email with, with queries. And I'll usually, I'm getting into a pattern of checking the emails a couple of times a week, processing reimbursements at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. So to give you an average time frame of how long the turnaround to get reimbursed would be, I would allow seven to 10 days. By the time I've seen it, processed it, and then it gets to the next level to be authorised, and, and then I'll let you know once it's gone through. And, um, that's basically how that's going to work. And so far, I think we're going well for the first month. Um, so far, so good. And finally, to get to the area about this system called Contour, which is a um, system that some other districts are using, I believe. I believe there's one other Australian district that's using it. And what it is going to be is a web-based system for people to lodge their reimbursement claims. So it'll be a bit more automated from the system we currently have. But for now, we're using the system that we've got and it's run smoothly in the past from what I can see. Uh, but if it does change, I'll be trained on what to do and then that training will be passed on to the area and division directors throughout the year. That's basically it in terms of what I had intended to cover. I uh, hope that that covers it well. And again, apologies for the presentation not showing with a PowerPoint, but those, that information will be made available through the other resources in the folder. So before I wrap up, are there any final questions? Okay, well, in that, thanks, in that case, thanks everybody for your attention and again, wishing you a great year. And I'll hand back to Manny as Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Thank I you. think that was great. At least we know what, how much budget we have to work around, especially with the contest. And also like the suggestion on how we can sort of uh, do some, you know, uh, save some cost as well in running these events. Thank you very much. Sorry, Manny, okay, I want to ask one question to Robin before she signs off. Of course. Robin, still here. Yeah, before, she... yes, correct. Yep. Robin? Yep. I uh, just out of curiosity, uh, is the business structure of Toastmasters, is it a non-for-profit? And as such, do we have access to non-for-profit rates at certain facilities? Yes, it is a not-for-profit. Um, and yes, you should be able to so to gain, gain access at venues. I'd certainly be putting that forward to venues in the first instance that we are not-for-profit. Like I know with our own club, we get it at a, a very cheap rate mm. for the, our venue based yeah. on that. And, and other venues where I've had dealings in the past are, are always given at a community rate. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying. Excuse me, Robin. Um, can I ask you to stop the screen share, please, now that you've completed? Oh, don't tell me it's working now. Yeah, it I needs to be know. stopped manually. <laughs> You're welcome. Why we can all see each other again. Uh, just on the uh, uh, topic of not for profit, the uh, documentation for it within Australia is not uh, not consistent or clear. Uh, so some councils will uh, accept our word for it, other ones demand uh, documentation. It's not straightforward. If the council is being resistant, uh, contact me. Thank you, David. Thanks for clarifying. 
And Robin, I think you've got another question from Beck. Oh. Hi. Yeah, I just, um, when you said the we send through the reimbursements to you to get, for me, like the accommodation, um, is there a cap on what I should be looking for? If I've got to pay for that up front and then get reimbursed, like what what are the parameters for that? Oh, that, that's a good whereabouts are you, Beck? So I'm 45 minutes south of Hobart and the other two clubs for me are like the round trip for me is 662 kilometres. Oh, I see. Okay. Between the two clubs. So I need to have two nights accommodation while mm -hmm. I'm travelling because I go to one club one night, the next club the next night because they meet consecutively mm -hmm. and then drive home the next day. So like it's it's a two and a half day thing for me. But yes. but I need those two nights accommodation. But I don't know if I'm booking that ahead of time. What is Toastmasters parameters around booking that accommodation? Okay, that's a good question. Um, look, I'm not actually specifically sure. I think it would be something I'd need to check and get back to you about because it's, um, David, do you know, or Janine, if there's an upper limit for that? No, I don't. Not okay. that I want five-star accommodation. No, but I, I, just... I, I don't believe there's uh, an upper limit as long as it's common sense, but uh, whether it's paid in advance, I'm not sure. I'd need to inquire as well. Mm. Yeah, can we come back to you on that one? Yep, no worries. Okay, thanks. 